Good afternoon. It's been quite a day so far, hasn't it? A day to remember here in the history of Northeast Mississippi Community College. I'd like to welcome all of you to our first ever, first pitch, Diamond Club Mingle. Uh, won't be a long program, but we've got, some, uh, got a couple treats for you planned. Uh, just a couple friendly reminders. At the end of the uh, program here today, the remaining chairback seats, their limited amount, will go on sale. We've got a place in the back, Hope uh, and Will Brand, you got Coach Connell, other bunch of them in the back there. They'll be able to do whatever when it comes to, uh, of course, if you, there are sponsorship uh, opportunities as well. If you've got a business or a group that would like to get that, because if you get the one of the sponsorship levels, you guarantee one of those chairback seats. Uh, so I'll have you, if you, there's a business, I'll have you, I'll cue you to when you go in the back. But as soon as this uh, event is over, then it's open. So if you those chair back seats that are $150 for the chair back uh, seats, of course that gives you a pass to get into uh, either a baseball or softball. But of course when you, the chair back seat that you purchase will be, you use that chair back for the sport that you purchased it for. But that'll give you into, so if you get a baseball chair back, you get in as many softball home games as you want as well. Uh, they'll go fast. So there's general admission uh, passes for the whole season. Those are $75. Uh, that'll also include you get updates throughout the year electronically on an email. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind, a general admission. Uh, that will give you a part of the Diamond Club membership as well. And for some of you that are looking for a little extra comfort, uh, no, you might not have a chair back, but we have also for $100, uh, for only $25 more, you get a cushion. We give you more little back support. Um, so that might be something to keep in mind for that. Cash, credit card, I understand it's all uh, open season there in the back, so they'll take whatever uh, payment plan that would be best for you. That'll be right after uh, today's program is over. So also uh, got to give a shout out to the coaches wives. Uh, I know Coach Harrelson and Coach Long both told me that they couldn't have done this without the help of Hope and Wendy. So let's give them a nice round of applause for everybody. Oh yeah. The MVPs, right coach? There you go. I'm gonna introduce uh, each team. And then after I introduce the team, so I'm gonna ask a student athlete from each to come forward and kind of get their take, a preseason take on uh, the season ahead. So, and then we'll bring on Keith Kessinger. We'll have a, a special interview at the end with Keith to wrap up the program. But as always, we're gonna start with the ladies. So if you wanna just raise your hand or whatever when I mention your name, so everybody can put a face to the name. Alex Melton. Maddie Pilcher. Kristen Perigo. Caitlin Matthews. Alexis McGregor. Taylor King. Maddie Tucker, Anna Claire Stahl, Brooke Baker, Caitlin Center, Jenny Thompson, Lindsay Coffey, Macy Busby, Hannah Milhorn, Annabeth Lucius, and Ariana Stoneback. Those are the 2020 softball Tigers. <laughs> Introducing your Northeast Tiger baseball team, Bryce Stanton, Sean Dalton Weatherby, Ramsey Ivy, Landon Wilkerson, Chase Kessinger, Chad Stevens, Nick Wilcher, Andrew Johnson, Peyton Jolly, Jacob Compton, Ethan Dyer, Sheffield Anthony, Connor Davis, JT Durham, Reed Markle, Peyton Harris, Jake Reeder, Cole Phillips, Gabe Moore, Hayden Scarborough, Hayes Hansford, A.J. Kalen, 
Reese Moore, Brian Seaman, Eli Eeks, who really uncoiled on one out there. That had to feel good, huh, Eli? Josh Basil, Basil, I apologize, Braden Lee, Dylan Hitchcock, Reed Dixon, and Ryder Willard, the 2020 Tiger baseball team. At this time, I'd like to ask a member of both our softball and baseball teams if they could come forward, uh, Ariana uh, Stoneback, a uh, right-handed sophomore pitcher from Realtown, Alabama. I moved down here. There you go. I have a seat right there. There you go. What a fan following there. Uh, and from our soft, uh, from our baseball team, I'd like to uh, ask if uh, Hayden uh, Scarborough could come forward. Hayden, of course, a sophomore catcher from Corinth. His dad played here, proud Northeast Tiger alum. Uh, only one microphone, so we got, if you don't mind sharing, but what I'll do is I'll ask you each a question, and then after you're done, just give it over there to uh, Mr. Scarborough, and we'll get his take on that as well. So appreciate the, uh, I don't know if it was quite a volunteer situation here, but appreciate you uh, taking one for your teams. Uh, let's first of all talk, Ariana, let's start with you, and. I know it was fun being out there today, but just your take on maybe the preseason practice, how the practice has been going on, because your season starts a week from today. Um, yeah, our practices, they're going really good. We're working really hard. We're really, really tight, close-knit team this year. We might be young, but we've got a lot going for us. That's important. Hayden, what do you, about you? Uh, how the guys been looking in practice, some things that you've been emphasizing in practice so far? Oh, man, we've been looking really good. Uh, we got a lot of young guys, a lot of young pitchers, but um, a lot of them are going to come in and help us. And uh, our hitters look great. We've been working on a lot of defense. I think we're the best defensive team in the state, if not the country. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm super confident about going into this season. That's wonderful. Great to hear that. How about for some of the fans that are here today and uh, kind of interested in what maybe some team goals this year? What are the expectations? Let's first of all start with the softball program. Um, Softball-wise, I think that we just are trying to focus on taking um, it one day at a time and proving everybody wrong because people think that just because we're young that we don't have anything going for us, but we, we got a lot in store. That's good. What about you, Hayden? What are some of the goals uh, that uh, maybe some of the things that uh, maybe some strengths of the team as well? Uh, well, I mean, we're all around. Just a solid team, you know, we can hit, we can play defense. We got pitchers, um, way more pitchers than we had last year. And uh, we got hot toward the end of the year last year. We kind of saw what it felt like to win some games. And uh, we talk about it like establishing a culture for this baseball team. That's what we want to do this year. That sounds great. That sounds really good. I got to ask you before you guys step down, I mean, what does it feel like? I mean, you, I mean, it was awesome for us, right, folks? When we came here to the ballpark today, how nice was that feeling to see that facility? But guess what? These ladies and these guys, they get to go to work every day in this facility. What's it like? Let's start with you, Ariana. And just talk about how important that is and how neat that is. I mean, you're the first softball program. Of course, Hayden, you and the guys are the first baseball program to ever have a facility on campus. And... By the way, not just any facility. You're talking about a state-of-the-art, one of the premier facilities in the country. Um, for softball, I feel like it's just like a dream come true because I never saw myself playing in a facility that nice in JUCO. Um, every day, like, you just get to go to a new home. It's better than having to go down to the park every day and play. So. No doubt about that. What about Hayden? What about for you and the guys? Uh, uh, you know, we're, we're super fortunate to be able to come out here and practice on this field every day. You know. I've seen teams that are taking ground balls in their parking lot, and we're out here on the nicest field in the state, if not the nation. And uh, I mean, coming from Corinth High School, we got a really nice field. To yes, have an upgrade from that, it's got to be really, really nice. And so we're super lucky to have it. What do you think about even going forward? Hayden, I'll stick with you on this. What about like future recruiting? I mean, 
this has got to be just a recruiting, wonderful recruiting piece, not only just for the college, but for also the baseball and the softball program. Talk a little bit about that looking down the road. Right, well, Coach Brand does a great job recruiting. He brings guys in, makes them feel really wanted. And to go out there and see your name on the Jumbotron and really feel like you're at home, it's going to bring in a lot of people. It's going to bring in a lot of key tools to bring a national championship in Northeast. That sounds great. Ms. Stoneback, how about your take on that? What about the down the road bringing uh, even more quality uh, student athletes here to Northeast to play softball? Um, I also think Kevin Connell does a good job recruiting. It makes you feel really at home. Like they, it's a big, tight knit family up here, and that's what helped me decide. And the field, of course, I mean, that's a big deciding factor in anybody wanting to come here. Guys, can't thank you enough. Let's hear it for, I mean, it's not a, an easy situation, Ariana. I've been talking about, I hope I didn't put too much pressure on, on this guy, but this is going to be something I've been looking forward to all week. Let's ask Keith Kessinger to please come forward. He's a former two-sport standout in the SEC, played baseball and basketball at Ole Miss. Uh, of course, played in the bigs for the uh, Cincinnati Reds. He was drafted by the Orioles, actually, in the 1989 amateur draft, and then the Reds purchased his contract in 1991. Made his major league debut, which I know I'm going to ask you about, Keith, in a little bit. September 15th, 1993, against the Braves. Actually got a hit in his first game. Not many can say that in their first game in the bigs. Uh, of course, you've heard his, uh, his voice quite a bit. Last 10 years, he's been alongside David Kellum uh, in, on the Ole Miss Baseball Radio Network. Both uh, Keith and his uh, wife, Laura, they've got two children, Anna Catherine. And of course, we know Chase, a proud member of the Northeast uh, Baseball Program. And Keith, uh, first of all, Welcome, I appreciate you being willing to do this, and it's been quite a day, hasn't it? Thanks, we'll appreciate it, and uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know that you can say enough about, about this facility. I mean, you see the pictures, and that's one thing, and then I've been fortunate enough to come over a few times and kind of seen it under construction, but to see the finished product is, is really special, and, and I think you touched on a, a really key part so many kids pick where they go to school, at least athletically, with their eyes. And I mean, you, you want to talk about all the other stuff, but this is going to be such a huge deal for both the softball and baseball programs um, to be able to get kids onto campus. And then, and then with the turf field and all the things that you, you don't have to worry about as much with the weather, the, 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 the uh, you know, the, the player, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Will? The, uh, <laughs> To be able to continue to develop, yes. the player development right. part of it is really going to be special. Yeah, I mean, because there's a lot of coaches around the country, I mean, when they see that weather forecast, oh, no, rain. I mean, if you're Harrelson, you're long, I mean, the coach, they just laugh now at the weather because they know it can rain. They're still going to practice that afternoon, and we can even get some light showers. We'll still be playing some baseball. You, you won't have to look at the radar quite as much. Where is Richie out here? Yeah, you yeah. won't have to look at the radar quite as much because, yeah. you know, if it stops, you're going to be able to get out there and play. That's a fact. And, and, and it's not just the games. It's how many days in practice that you get. Yes. All the days you get oh, to take yeah. VP and take round balls and things that you wouldn't get to do. So uh, really special, special place. Yeah, I remember uh, you and Chase uh, back in the fall came over for football. Chase was given the invocation that night before the football game, and you were just amazed. You're like, well, I can't believe this place. And it wasn't even halfway home. I mean, and, and to see this to its fruition. And this is a guy, I mean, you've seen a few ballparks in your day. So this is a really, a, it is a very special situation that we got here at Northeast. Well, they did a great job, obviously, planning it, and, and certainly the, the finished product is, uh, from, from top to bottom, it's really something special. Well, you've been around baseball forever. Uh, I know growing up in Chicago, you had the opportunity that, uh, for some of you that don't know, uh, his dad, Don, Chase's grandfather, a uh, longtime player in the Major League Baseball, multiple all-star appearances, multiple Golden Glove awards at shortstop for the Cubs. You grew up in Chicago. I know a lot of us are curious, what was that like? I mean, you're going to first grade, second grade, I think up to third grade there in Chicago. And oh, by the way, your dad's playing this afternoon for the Cubs. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the really crazy thing, Will, is that I didn't know any different. I mean, my brother and I, that's, that's what my dad did. My dad went to Wrigley Field, my dad played baseball games. Um, for the day. I mean, if I could go back and all the cool things that we got to do, I mean, yeah, you, you'd think it was a lot cooler. 
um, doing it. But it, it's what we did, and uh, every single day. And, and and truly, my parents made it as normal and routine as as anybody else's job. Um, but yeah, we got to do some some really cool things. And um, you know, I, I I just wish that in some ways you could go back and and some of the people and some of the autographs and you know, I mean, I, I used to get bats that were signed by you know players that are in the Hall of Fame, and I'd go like hit with them because I didn't I didn't know, I didn't know they'd be worth something one day. <laughs> Um, so, but no, it was, it was cold in Chicago, Yes. but, uh, but no, it was, that was really fun time. And uh, like I said, my parents made it really special. That is neat. Of course, they moved to Memphis when your dad then, uh, went with, to the Cardinals. Uh, so, I mean, just golly, if you, like you said, turning the clock back, did you learn anything when you went to the ballpark? Did you see some things, but are you, were you just so young? You really couldn't really pick up some of the things, some of the traits, uh, uh, of your dad and some of the other big leaguers. Well, I mean, I'm sure somewhere along in the way of, of my career, Will, where, you know, some things I saw, I'm sure that was that was helpful. Um, but, but, you know, again, you, when you're just 10 or 12 or whatever age it is, I don't know that you, you, you think about what's going to happen when you're 20 or 25. But, um, but yeah, we ended up, my dad, when I got traded from the Cubs to the Cardinals, uh, somehow we, we missed the turn to St. Louis, ended up in Memphis. So grew up the rest of the time in Memphis. And my dad ended up then going to the White Sox. Right. I uh, was player manager of the White Sox, which was really kind of a cool mm. deal. So I, those are really the years I remember the most, the kind of the White Sox years where uh, we got to travel some, be in the dugout, do some things during the game. And uh, that was that was all pretty cool, too. Yeah. Wow, cool. And, and I will tell you, that? that was disco demolition night was happening. I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen. That was a long time ago. But, um, yeah, they, they blew up. They had this big promotion between games of doubleheader. Where they that. were going to blow up disco records on the field, and uh, we were at the game, and they really didn't think it was going to draw that big a crowd. Well, it drew. They had to like close the gates because the crowd, and when they blew up the disco records at, at halftime between <laughs> between yes. the games, yes, um, they ended up having to forfeit the second game. I mean, basically, a riot broke out on the field. They had a things got caught on fire. They had to bring the riot police in. Um, and it's, I believe it's the last Major League Baseball game that ever got forfeited. I think you're uh, right. My dad, uh, my dad took an L on a game he didn't get to manage. Isn't that something? And for some of the younger guys and ladies, uh, just YouTube that, and you, you'll see it. Um, they're probably thinking, disco, yeah, what, know, what is it's... disco? What does that mean? What is that? What kind of music is that? Uh, you talk about your dad, and of course, growing up in Madison, Wisconsin, um, I mean, the Brewers had a team that moved from Seattle in 1970, but even the NBC affiliate in Madison showed Cub games on the weekend. So I grew up, I mean, I was a huge fan of your dad's. And so one of the highlights for me in my 36 years down here, uh, one night, just one story about your dad. I mean, we were over in New Albany. He was throwing out the first pitch. I was emceeing the opening ceremonies of a Disney Youth World Series, which was cool enough just hanging with your dad. But then he said, hey, Will, you want to grab something to eat afterwards? And so I was like, are you kidding me? I mean, Don Kessinger, I'm going to go a chance to eat with Don Kessinger. I mean, I ate, I'm sure he thought, how many times, how many bites is this guy going to take to get his sandwich done? Because I was trying to stretch out that night as long as I could. I mean, you're talking about, you know, your dad and your mom, high character, but, you know, the faith that's behind. Uh, I mean, he just... You, you were blessed to uh, grow up in an environment like that, both you and your brother. Yeah, no question. Um, I, so many people don't have uh, parents that are as involved as my parents were. And, um, and forgetting all the, I guess, the, the kind of cool part of, you know, what we got to do in life. Um, the main thing for, for us is that we had, we had a mom and dad, still do, thankfully, um, that, that cared about us, loved us, got us to the right places, um, and, and made what's important important. And, and certainly that's Hopefully what we're able to instill in our kids as well. All right. Well, let's fast forward. Okay, now you're two-sport star. Not easy, just like your dad. I mean, your Star. Dad. Star. Go yes, ahead. yes. I'm a marketing guy. You know what I'm saying? You kind of, you know, he was a standout. Very difficult. You guys know how hard it would be to play two sports here at Northeast. This guy was doing it just like your dad uh, at Ole Miss, which took a little something extra special. Talk about that and maybe the discipline and some of the things you learned that maybe you can help out with uh, some of these guys, not only when they're playing here, but some of the things that you learned that you're still using today. Well, I think one of the things in sports in general that, um, that it, from a college athletic standpoint, just the time management part. I mean, you've got the normal school that everybody else has. Um, and on top of that, you've got the hours and hours of, of practice um, to try to, to get as good as you can in your sport. And, you know, in my situation, I did, I signed as a basketball player uh, at Ole Miss, knowing I was going to try to play both sports. And, um, you know, growing up in Memphis, 
college basketball was kind of king, and, and college baseball wasn't nearly what college baseball uh, is today. And so that's what I wanted to do, and spent the first two years playing playing basketball at Ole Miss, and uh, then played my last three years played played baseball. And um, so yeah, it took a lot of time, but um, I wouldn't, you know, it was fun. No, you know, I got to do some cool stuff. Oh, no question. Okay. Now you finish that third year with baseball, and you get the call from the Baltimore Orioles. What was that experience like? You're now a pro baseball player. Well, I mean, we, you know, the draft is really, I mean, and these guys, hopefully at one time, a lot of them will get to, to figure it out, is, is a really unpredictable thing. I mean, you, you think you're going to get drafted one place, and, and certainly the technology wasn't in 1989 the way it is today, where you can follow every draft pick online. And no, I mean, you're, you're literally waiting for a phone call. Um, and it took a little longer than, than I expected, but yeah, I um, got drafted by the Orioles in 38th, 39th round. A lot of guys got picked before me uh, <laughs> that year. Um, but then, you know, you, every, you get to go play pro baseball, and uh, as I tell everybody, you get to sleep late, you don't have to go to work if it rains, uh, and you get to play baseball. So uh, I couldn't really beat it for the eight years I got to play pro baseball. And no doubt, that's uh, always a good day to go to the ballpark. Uh, you get called up. Well, you, first of all, the Reds purchased your contract in 91, and then you get the call up in September of 1993. One of my favorite questions always to ask a guy that makes it to the bigs is, what was that experience? Do you remember? Uh, how did that all go down where you found out you're going to the bigs? I, I do remember. Yeah, it, was, okay. it was a rather memorable day. Um, yeah, it was, it, my, my story is a little bit interesting because I, I had gone from double A AA to triple A um, in 1993. Uh, and then was actually, the, and I had a, a really, really good year that year, and was kind of hoping, you know, you get to late this season, have the rosters expand in September, and you're hoping to get called up to the big leagues, and I, and it didn't happen, and uh, actually ended up back home. I'm in I'm in Oxford for three days, um, and then the phone rings, and uh, Jim Bowden, who some of you guys may see on MLB TV now, Jim Bowden was general manager of the Reds at the time. And Jim calls me on the phone, or actually his secretary or whoever calls and says, Mr. Bowden would like to speak to you. And I, I'm really trying to figure out what I did to do, get in trouble um, at that point, because you're not thinking you're getting called up after you've been home. And he says, he says, Keith, Jim Bowden, and uh, we are thinking about calling you up this afternoon in big leagues. I'm like, like, who do you call and say we're thinking about? <laughs> I'm like, isn't that a conversation? Yes. Shouldn't you have decided before you, you call? You hammer that out yes, before the yes call. Or no. yeah. Right. Um, and he uh, ultimately what it was is David Johnson, who was the manager at the time. Uh, David Johnson, I think, was playing golf that morning, and he didn't actually want to tell me before he told David okay. Johnson they were calling me up. So, yes, I, he says, hey, hang out by the phone. Uh, we'll give you a call back later in the afternoon. Well, obviously, I wasn't setting the phone down at that point for, uh, for the rest of the day. And <laughs> about an hour later, phone calls, and he says, you're on a plane at 2 o'clock going to Atlanta and uh, playing the Braves that night. So uh, dad drives me up, dad was coaching at Ole Miss at the time, right. and uh, dad drives me up to Memphis, and he's given me so much great advice in my life. I mean, just mm. fantastic advice. Mm. And the last thing he told me before I was playing is he says, do not worry about anything, because they're not going to play you tonight. You hadn't even picked up a bat in four days. Don't worry about it. Well, he, that was wrong advice, because <laughs> you know, I got, got to the ballpark that night, I'm in the lineup, um, and you know, it was, that was a pretty, wow. pretty cool deal. Literally got to hit the first pitch I saw. So that was, um, that was pretty fun. Ball still at my house. Um, so that was, that was a fun day. I remember that night because I was anchoring the sports that night and I was, that was my lead story. That was so cool. I mean, how weak were you in the knees or because you were a Kessinger and you learned from your dad and all these stories through the years, were you maybe more relaxed than well, normal. I, I, I wasn't very relaxed, I'll tell you that. The, the, I'll tell you a couple different stories about that. First of all, when you go out and you take, you know, these guys know, I mean, you take BP, you take BP. I mean, you go out and it really wasn't any different than any other day. And when you're taking BP, there's nobody in the stadium. And so it doesn't, it doesn't really, I mean, yeah, it feels different. There's guys I was watching on TV the night before that I'm standing next to the cage yes. with. Um, but then you go back in the locker room, and then when you come out, and, and that night it rained, and so we didn't take infield. So I'm just back in the locker room. And then when I walk back out on the field, I mean, there's 60,000 people, you know. And, and I just started telling myself, because, like, the places I had played in the minor leagues, we didn't have, like, a third deck. Oh, yeah. You know, and I just kept thinking, just look at the bottom two decks and don't worry about the rest of the people that are there. And so that that part was – no, I mean, I was, I was pretty nervous, there's yeah. no doubt. But the um, – I, when you get called up late in the year, you don't get like choice of numbers. 
And yes. so I'm, I'm, I'm number 62, 62, which is not really, you know, not really your key. Not, I bet you none of you guys are wearing number 62 <laughs> today. Um, and, and this is a true story. In, in the third inning of the game, I look down and the six has fallen off the front of my jersey. Like literally, it's like peeling off the front of my jersey. <laughs> like they'd forgotten to sew it, they had just pressed it on. Oh, and the second base umpire, I wish I knew who it was, but he, he obviously knew my dad, and he said something about, hey kid, your number's falling off your jersey. And, and, and I'm just panicked anyways, because I'm like, well, do I, do I get in trouble if my number falls off the jersey? Well, like and so I, 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 yeah. I have to go in between innings and have to take my jersey off, and the equipment manager is sewing my number during, um, the half in, during, during, the during the half inning of my first big league game. Um, putting the jer the uh, number back on to my to my uniform. So, um, but 62 is uh, is always going to be a good number for me. Yeah, I had no doubt about that. Okay, so now you're you're in the ballpark. You're not looking at the third deck. You're in the lineup, and all of a sudden, up the plate, Keith Kissinger. You're walking to the batter's box. What's going through? You remember that? You remember the heart? Probably the yeah, heartbreak. I, I, I I'm not near as worried about hitting because you know, I mean, if you get a hit, you get a hit. If you don't, you don't. I mean, it, it was defense that, that you don't want to miss something. And fortunately, early in the game, they hit like a little pop up, and I was pretty good at pop ups. I could I could catch those. <laughs> okay, so um, I, I got that kind of make the first play out of the way, and yeah, I just remember one of the one of the guys in the talk. That might have been Barry Larkin. He was actually hurt but traveling with the team, and and. Uh, He's a Hall of Famer now, and but neat guy. And I, I remember him telling me before I got up, he was like, "Hey, you only get one shot, you know, at your first at bat, and you know, don't be late." And so that was, I was like, "Okay, I'm just, I'm not gonna be late. I'm, okay. I'm gonna swing at it." And I probably would have swung at the first pitch, regardless of where it was. That was my thinking. And uh, fortunately, it was, it was a strike, and got a base hit. Get the base hit. You take the turn, and all of a sudden, hey, this rookie, you get the ball thrown in, and if you go back in the dugout. And all these guys that you just watched on TV the night before, they're your teammates now. Well, did they say anything? Did they give you, did they prank you? What are they, what are they? Well, yeah, I mean, it, well, that night they didn't. I mean, there okay. were obviously, a, along the way, there were some interesting things that, that occurred. But uh, no, yeah, the ball, I mean, it was, you know, again, it was a very cool moment. The yeah. ball's waiting for you in the dugout. And, um, you know, literally three days later, my fourth at bat, um, my first home game in Cincinnati, I hit a home run, yeah. and um, as, as I'm, this is this is really a bad story because this is the truth. So so I go and I mean I didn't hit a whole lot of home runs, well, so it wasn't <laughs> like something that I knew the ball was going out of the ballpark. And as I'm as I hit it, I knew I hit it good, and I, I didn't think they were going to catch it. And as it was the old school turf, it wasn't this good turf. It was that you know the, oh. the really stuff that you like rip your knees up on turf Absolutely. in Cincinnati. And when I left the little cutout at home plate and hit the turf, my spike got caught and like, I can feel I'm gonna fall. Like I really, I can feel it, I'm going to fall <laughs> running to first base. And all I can think about is the ball is gonna hit the wall Yeah. and I'm gonna be standing on first base and everybody's thinking I was pimping it big league and you know, this home run. And I, I absolutely fell, I'm flat on my face. And as I'm getting up is when I actually see the ball, the, the, uh, the ball leave the ballpark and, and come all the way around. And, and it was kind of like it ruined this great moment because I literally fell down running to first base on what I thought was gonna be my first what, what, and of many home runs. It turned out to be my only major league home run. Um, <laughs> but, but when I got to the dugout, no one said anything. I mean, no one said anything like that. You know, Did baseball they not guys, see it? Well, I mean, I think they were so shocked they hit it that far that okay. they're all watching the ball. Yeah. And so, uh -oh. so, I mean, I make it all the way down. I thought, I survived, I fell down and no one saw it. Yeah. And a guy named Thomas Howard, who was hitting right behind me, Thomas hits a home run. And of course, he'd been on deck, and so he had like the best angle to see me fall. Oh. And it, he didn't get to the dugout before he said, hey, don't worry, they're all gonna know you fell down soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he said, oh, so yeah, I was caught at that point. Oh, oh that is awesome. <laughs> what a great story. Mm. All right, this next question might not be the fairest one. But if you don't want to answer it, that's fine also. But I've said this for years. I mean, I respect, obviously, the stew out of the Kessingers. Always have. I've always said the Kessingers are to baseball what the Mannings are to football. Is that even fair? Or is that like something that it's not fair for Chase? It's not fair for 
Gray, for anybody, I mean, talk a little bit about that to lit with the expectations of being a Kessinger, and people compare the Kessingers to the Mannings. Well, I mean, I, I don't know about the, the, the Kessinger, man. I mean, I, I mean, I. Well, you're home. I, I wish, right? well, I mean, I, I, I didn't have anywhere near the career of <laughs> Well, I, I typically like to combine my dad's stats and mine. It works okay. out a lot better that way, where okay. we combine for six all-star games. Yeah. There you go. We combine for That's two gold spin. gloves and yeah. 1,900 hits in the big leagues. And, yeah. um, so that, that part I, I do. But, no, I think that the, the, the expectation part, and, and Chase certainly, I know, feels it, and I don't want to talk too much about Chase. And I hear you. Of the deal. Um, but I do think that, that there was, there, there's so many pros, and, and it's mostly all pros. I mean, when, when you're, when you have a dad like my dad, and of course I was the second Kessinger playing pro baseball, um, there were so many positives. I mean, he, he was so well thought of, and, and it certainly allows you to be seen, I think, in ways that maybe the, the other person that's out there with the last name of something else wasn't, wasn't getting seen. But there were expectations, and, and certainly there were times that I didn't want to feel like I let my dad down. And, and, and so um, I think there was some internal pressure at times from that. And, um, and obviously then my brother came along and he played pro baseball and then my nephew, Kevin's son, Gray, uh, was a second round pick, I guess was what the Brooks Wallace award winner last year at Ole Miss is right. college shortstop of the year. Um, and is with the Astros now. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure that, that Chase feels some of that, but um, you know, it's, you gotta be you and do your thing. And, and that's what we always want to, what all of them to do. Well, it's been a proud for me to know you, you gotta be you, you gotta be a Kessinger and it's been uh, what a treat it's been for you taking some time out and answering questions. I mean, Comar, I didn't, hopefully I didn't throw too many curves at you. I try to make a wiffle ball approach to this thing, just lob it in there to you. Appreciate you doing this. Thank you, Will. Appreciate it very much. Keith Kessinger, everybody. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, I knew that was going to be good. I just love hearing stories. Don't you love hearing the, I mean, because all of us that, we never would have a chance to experience all that stuff in the bigs and locker room and all that. So I know that that was going to be uh, some interesting information and some uh, some funny anecdotes for uh, for all of us here today. Uh, before I wrap it up, just want to say thank you again for everybody being here. It's been quite a day. It's a day that we'll never forget. Just like you never forget that day you hit your first uh, home run, Keith, in the bigs. This is a day that we're never going to forget. Uh, an historic day. Right now, if you have a business or a company that you'd like to have one of those featured sponsorships so you can guarantee a, a chair back seat, why don't you go ahead and start, if you want to do that, to go in the back. Uh, Coach Brand, Coach Connell is back there with Hope. Um, if not, when um, I wrap this up, the limited number of chair back seats will be uh, going pretty quickly, I know. Uh, don't forget, if you don't get one, not the end of the world, there's still general mission seats that will be available as well. Only $75 for those. If you want a little extra cushion, you want a little extra support, you have those, um, ask for the $100 uh, seat. Uh, and once again, credit cards, cash, whatever, checks that will we'll, uh, accept any uh, form of payment. But uh, just want to say all the best guys this year. Ladies, all the best this spring. We'll be cheering for the black and gold. And once again, a sincere thank you to all of you for making this day extra special. Thanks again for being here.